know they say, I heard Joe Lowson before say, in order to be an eagle, you gotta fly with eagles. I wanna be the goat, so I'm my goats, baby. My whole life, I really didn't have people to look up to. I didn't have role models, I didn't have artists, I didn't. I just had drug dealers, bro, and family that straight hustled. class and I got so into it I mean my teacher showed me mad love he's like yo Luis you can come in during lunch anytime you want so me and my friends were going there we'll just mess with Photoshop and those people in the hood rappers was like yo I'll do your album cup for twenty dollars I'm putting like wings on them behind the city like we're old school and they was yo that was my that was doing my thing that was my first graphics I ever sold man making album covers for people in the hood I brought you guys to this place. This is why I used to come, man. This one thing that I definitely miss about just California. The hills, the beauty. Just coming up here, getting away from all the crazy things down in the city. Ever since I've been coming back and forth since I moved to Houston, it's like I like to come up here and just hear from God. Dreams don't go on sale. And neither does your calling. I paid full price. What's up? This your homie, your dog, Pastor Moo. I'm honored to say, hey, I'm, I'm Luis Young Light, Light Pastor, a mighty man of God. I watched him grow, uh, or God develop him to do an extraordinary work for the kingdom of God. I watched when he came from uh, coaching you from our, our football team to his first job to just doing music. This is a young man on fire for the Lord and, and really trying to navigate his life and through ministry. Uh, one thing I, 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 I remember when in pastor like God told me one thing. He said, don't tie him up. Stop it. Don't, don't put, don't put you wrapped around him because I'm going to do something with him. And so I, I was just there just to keep logs on the fire and then to watch God take him down to Houston and just to see him with uh, 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 social uh, misfits and social club and writing books and documentary. Man, this is extraordinary. This is the church of the 21st century. Uh, I know my brother has a passion for the Lord. I know he has a passion for young people. And one thing I love about him because he's a go-getter. Light, I have a vision and he'll get running. Like, you ain't got no money. You ain't got nothing. What you gonna do? He don't care. He going. And so I, I love that about him. I To watch him through social media and to see what God is doing, it, it gives my heart so much joy. I can't even really express how I feel to know I'm connected to such greatness. And then he, he circled back through the town and said, what's back? Holla at me. So I'm just, it's just honored to uh, just be here talking about this mighty man of God. I can see God using him to truly uh, continue to transform this new generation. He is definitely a general, amen, in this new generation. If you're watching this, you're looking at a life of a general, amen. Support this, push this, amen, because this is not only inspiring this present generation to believe, but I'm talking about my kids, 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 gonna have something to look up to in this man of God. So it's an honor 
It's an honor, amen. He came a mighty long way. And I'm just, I salute him, amen. Keep flying, keep pushing, amen. No weapon formed against you shall problem. You are the light, the light of the world. Amen, keep shining, boy. immigrants bus I remember one day I was preaching at a church and I was preaching on forgiveness and I was preaching about people forgiving their mom forgiving their dad or just forgiving anybody that did something wrong to them through our life right and I remember preaching this and youth came up to the altar and they gave their life to the Lord I remember that same night I went back to my hotel room and I felt the Lord tell me Luis it's time for you to forgive your dad and I was like hold on Hold on, hold on. But you want me to like, go and like forgive my dad? I'm like, yeah, there's no point if I preach something, but I don't actually live it. So I remember saying, okay, God, if you want me to see my dad, I don't have the money, I don't have the funds, I'm a broke Bible college student. So I said, you make a way for me to go to Mexico. So two days later, the board uh, from this ministry I was working at said, yo, Luis, you feel like for some reason we need to get you a flight. Where do you want to go? And that's when I was like, yo, that's crazy. I want to, I need to go to Mexico. I need to forgive my dad. I need to talk with my father. I just start thinking about all the good and all the bad that happened. I'm like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if my dad wants to see me. I don't know if he just, he's gonna slap me in the face. If he's gonna be like, what are you doing here? You're not my son. Or if he's gonna welcome me with arms wide open. And I get to Guadalajara, first time ever going to Mexico too. I get to Guadalajara, somebody picks me up and we drive three hours all the way to Sawayo, Michoacan. So I was good the whole ride, but when I got to like, Wyoming Chalkan and I was outside of my dad's house, my adrenaline, my heartbeat, like I started crying. I was angry, like, yo, I'm about to see this man. Like, I'm gonna fight him. Like, I'm gonna love him. Like, there were so many emotions that I hit the truck and I told my uncle, take me back. Like, take me back to Guadalajara. I'm going back to Houston. I'm going home. He's like, what are you doing? Like, tu papá te necesita. Tu papá te quiere ver. And I'm like, why does he want to see me? Like, whatever. So I just manned up and I remember I got like, I just heard the word healing. Like I knew that that day was not going to be for my dad or for anybody else, but it was really gonna help me. So I faced my fear and all my insecurities and all these lies and I knocked at the door and he was asleep. So I go inside and I remember my dad is sleeping in the bed and I'm moving him. I'm like, pa, pa, a pa, a pa, and he's asleep. So now he's talking to me in his sleep like he's dreaming. He's like, Luis, mijo? And I'm like, pa, so yo, it's so yo, Luis. So he like wakes up and he sees me and he just runs and he hugs me like, he just hugs me and he starts crying and I start crying and I begin to feel like literally how they say like, God wrap your arms around you. Like I felt God was in that room. I remember just hugging my dad and asking him, yo dad, forgive me and I forgive you for so and so. And it was so quick. So much time, I'm talking about seven years, eight years of me hating my dad and was so, it was gone. I'll be lying if I said it was the sweetest thing right after, it wasn't. It was so awkward, like I haven't seen my dad, he hasn't seen me, he didn't know I was gonna come. He thought he was having a dream and you really wake up and your son is there that you haven't seen. But I remember spending time with him in Mexico and just seeing my uncles and seeing my grandma's house and my uncle's house, just being able to see my roots being able to see where I come from. There were drawings on the wall of my dad when he was in San Quentin prison, but there's drawings and I begin to see where my creativity comes from and it comes from my dad. My hustle comes from my mother, but my creativity comes from my dad. I saw these beautiful hand drawings that he drew in jail that he was sent back to Mexico to his mom and his dad and I saw all of that stuff and I'm like, okay, this is where I get my creativity from. And I'm starting to see and I'm starting to get to know my father more and it's like God is building this stuff up and I begin to think about my older brother. The reason why I started thinking about my older brother is because 
Him and my dad didn't have a good relationship. I'm the middle child. I have a younger sister and an older brother. My older brother didn't talk to my dad. Like, it was all bad. No phone call. They was beefing with each other. Always had problems. They just never talked. But I remember telling myself, my brother needs this. If there's anybody that needs this to happen, it's my brother. This was about four years ago. Long story short, I tell God, what do you want me to do with this? I remember saying, it's time for you to take your brother to Mexico to see your dad. I'm like, but my brother's an immigrant. Like, he doesn't have papers. So I call my brother. He was like, no, Luis, I just got my citizenship. And I was like, do you want to see my dad? He will always say, no, I don't want to see my dad. I don't care about that man. That's your daddy. That's not my dad. I only got my mom. And he had his valid reasons. So I knew that at some point, God was going to take care of it. Long story short, he says, let's do it. We hop on the plane. My dad doesn't know my brother is coming. They haven't seen each other in 13 years. And the last time they saw each other, it wasn't good. 13 years without seeing each other, we get on. Um, a flight from, o from Oakland. I fly to Oakland to pick my brother up. From Oakland, we go to Guadalajara, and there's my dad and my brother, and they meet for the first time in 13 years. And I remember when they saw each other, I just stepped back. Like, I just stepped back and I watched God orchestrate whatever he was doing in that moment. I watched my brother and my dad literally love on each other. I could just feel all the healing my brother was going through. I could just feel my dad's joy to see his son. Like. His oldest son, he hadn't talked to him in so long. And it was like for the first time in forever, they put their pride down. Hispanics are so prideful, let's just be honest. Like, especially Mexicans are like, you did me wrong, it's over. Hasta ahí quedó, no más. That's just who we are, right? Like, that's it. So to see that from my dad and my brother, like, now I want that no more, I knew it was a God thing. It was a divine appointment where God was using me. And I thought it was just the book, literally using me to bring my brother and my dad together after 13 years.